Hi, in this video, we are going to focus on Azure interview questions. So if you are appearing for Microsoft Azure interview and this is a beginner level, I would say you are starting at the early stage. This is where we are going to discuss. So if you have some experience, you have some certification with Microsoft Azure or maybe you have more than two years of experience, this video is not for you. So let's quickly get started without wasting time. What are different types of services offered by Azure? So what kind of what type of different I mean, what different types of services which are offered by Azure? So like, how can I use the Azure platform? I can use the Azure platform as infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service. Now, if you don't know what is infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service, please go to the channel and look into that video because I don't think I should be explaining it here. The next question is what is Azure? So first of all, try to understand one thing. This is a very important point. It is a public cloud computing platform. That means I as an individual, you as an individual can actually go to Azure website and you can start using their cloud computing platform. And again, it is a cloud computing platform by Microsoft Azure. Now try to understand one thing. The interviewer is trying to understand if you understand the meaning of cloud altogether compared to just Microsoft Azure. Now, what are different cloud deployment models we have with Microsoft Azure? So we have, oh, sorry, what are different cloud deployment models? So what are the different kinds of deployment models which are there? So we have public cloud, we have private cloud and we have hybrid cloud. What is a public cloud? Public cloud is something where you can access the cloud without any special permission or access that is it is publicly available it is not free but yes it is publicly available then we have private cloud i need a special access an example let's say if i want to uh, like launch an application within the infrastructure of instagram or i would say meta what do i have to do i have to become and become their employee only after that i will be able to access their private cloud so this is what the private cloud is and hybrid cloud hybrid cloud is nothing but a combination of a public cloud and a private cloud so what happens i have a private cloud i have a public cloud and when i combine it it becomes a hybrid cloud let's move to the next question can i connect my on-prem servers with cloud now the interviewer is trying to understand do you actually understand the meaning of hybrid cloud so yes you can connect on-prem servers with cloud this kind of deployment model is known as hybrid cloud i'll give you a scenario here let's say you are icici bank and for some reason you cannot store your data anywhere apart from your own premises that means you have to manage the data so you have your own servers which are private cloud but now you want to analyze the data you want to do some data analysis so what you did you used a cloud which is a public cloud so you could technically connected private cloud and public cloud so this is an example of when you are going to connect your on-prem servers with the cloud so that you can leverage the power of hybrid cloud so all the good part of your private cloud and all the good part of your public cloud. Microsoft Azure services are limited to only Azure, uh, sorry, Microsoft re related platform like Windows, .NET. Now here the interviewer is trying to understand like if the client comes and they are not, they, are, they have not built their application on Microsoft platforms, will they be able to leverage the power of Microsoft Azure? The answer is yes. We are not limited. We can use all range of platforms on Microsoft Azure and Azure supports all open source platforms like MySQL, PHP, Python, Java and Oracle. Oracle is obviously not an open source platform, but yes, we can use that. So no matter what vendor you have, you can use that in Microsoft Azure services like be it Oracle, be it anyone. Next question is what is a virtual machine? Now here the interviewer is trying to understand do you actually understand the meaning of it? So first of all, a virtual machine is a, is an on-demand virtual server for our use. Obviously it's an on-demand that means whenever I want to use it I can go and I can start using it. 
it is an example of infrastructure as a service please try to understand one thing this is the most important point you have to mention that it is an example of infrastructure as a service and we can create our own virtual servers using virtual machines so obviously if i want to host an application i want to do something crazy with it i can do that using virtual machine the next question is what is virtual machine scale set so it is a group of more than one virtual machine with same configuration how it helps it helps deploy multiple virtual machine high availability and application resilience we get and it helps our helps us scale our application so let's say if our application cannot sustain in a single virtual machine we can create a virtual machine scale set which will have multiple application with same configuration this is the important point the next question we have what is an availability set an availability set is a logical grouping of VM that allows Azure to understand how your application is built to provide redundancy and availability. Important point, logical grouping of VMs. You have to mention this point specifically. The next question is what are network security groups? So network security groups is technically like a firewall if I may, I'll give you an example. What do I mean by that? So let's say we have a gate. Now we can only allow people who are squarish. We cannot allow people who are around. Okay. So they have the entry. They don't have the entry because we are not accepting round people. So this is what network security group is. Obviously you can see contains a list of access control list rules allow or deny network traffic to subnet or NIC or both. So basically what happens, I'll give you a very simple scenario. We have a network. We don't want anyone to access port 80, which is for HTTP. We want people to access 443, which is HTTPS. We don't want people to access port number 25, which is SMTP. We only want people to access port number 22 from, uh, I mean, IP 1.2.3.4. So basically what is happening, I'm setting rules. If I want to access port number 22 from IP 1.2.3.4, I can access. If I want to uh, uh, use port number 25, I cannot do that. If I want to use port number 80, I cannot do that. If I want to use port number 443, I can do that. So this is what network security group, it's technically set of rules. What is Azure Active Directory? Important question if you are going for the admin level of the Azure uh, infrastructure. Azure Active Directory or AD is an identity access, identity and access management system. It is used to grant access to Azure resources to employees. So basically what happens if your organization has 3000 people, we have to manage them so not everyone has the 100% access to the resources. Just imagine if a new joinee has the 100% of the access and he deletes everything. We don't want that. So we will be making sure that certain people have the access, certain level of access. So like let's say five people have 100% access, 2000 people have 50% access, I mean 50% and remaining people have just 20% access. With 20% I mean that they are able to access the 20% of the resources. The next question is what is Azure Service Fabric? Azure Service Fabric is a service in Azure which helps us manage, I mean package, deploy, manage scalable and reliable microservices. So let's say if you want to, if your application has microservices, instead of doing all the crazy stuff, use the uh, uh, platform of Azure Service Fra Fabric where you can package, deploy and manage scalable and reliable microservices. The next question we have is what is VNet? So VNet is technically a LAN on the cloud. So VNet is your own network in Azure, Microsoft Azure if I talk about. You don't have the question mark there. So basically what happens just like you have a LAN, you have building A, you have building B, you have building C and all the devices if I may can access a certain page but anyone from outside cannot access that. Why? Because they are not part of this LAN. So similar thing we can do inside a virtual network so that, that means people who are part of this network can access this page but someone who is from outside 
is denied the access using vnet what is azure reddish cache a very important question the interviewer is trying to understand your understanding of platform as a service so first of all azure reddish cache is a platform as a service it is a dedicated service by microsoft azure where you can create a reddish instance for storing in memory data structure so basically what happens reddish is a, a like key value database where you store uh, data in terms of keys and values so obviously instead of installing it updating it patching it making all the security patches azure said hey we'll do that because that is what platform as a service do and you manage everything else the next question is what is azure resource manager so azure resource manager is actually manage your infrastructure with declarative templates then script so basically what happens if you have a huge infrastructure instead of having them written as a script you will have them as a template so let's say if you want to spin up a new infrastructure you can just run that in from the template and it will be up and running without any issues the reason behind here is it helps us do a lot of automation because let's say if you want to spin 50 virtual machines it is not possible manually to do that but when you are going to write any templates it is going to be very easy for you and secondly deploy manage monitor all resources as group then individual as i mentioned it will be difficult for us to manage 50 virtual machines what is azure function azure function first of all is serverless as a service if you want to call it basically it is no code technically so basically what is happening you don't have i mean sorry it's not no, no code it's serverless that means you just have to write your code and everything else is taken care by microsoft azure you only manage your code you don't have to manage server you don't have to manage operating system you don't manage have to manage the platform nothing the second beauty here is you only pay for execution time so if your function is idle you are not charged basically what happens if you have a virtual machine you are charged early irrespective of you're using it or not but if we talk about functions if it is executed that means it was used only then you will be charged the next question is what is azure blob storage so azure blob storage is an object storage solution provided by microsoft azure obviously it stands for binary large object in case if you want to know the full form of it and secondly it is used to store unstructured data like document images audio video so a very good example would be let's say we have instagram so instagram has images has videos so we will be storing those images audios technically text also and audio also inside azure blob storage so these are the basic questions which are asked in microsoft azure interview if you have any other questions please put them in the comment i'll try my best to answer them and i'm waiting for the suggestions for the next video so with this thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one